Winter is my favorite time to go out to observe and image the nighttime sky. Yes, it can be bitterly cold for many of us, but the nights are long and the sun sets early, leading to some remarkable opportunities for you to go out to observe and image the nighttime sky. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through the top 10 objects that I enjoy to go out to observe and image every year during this time. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about your questions, experiences, and anything you would add to this list in the comments section below. Now let's start by going outside right around sunset and setting up our equipment. Whether you're observing or imaging, it's important to give it time to acclimate to the temperature and conditions outside for the best views and images of these incredible deep sky objects. So let's head outside right now, set up our equipment, and see what the night sky has to offer. It's about an hour and a half after sunset on a very cold winter night, but it's crystal clear, there's no wind, there's no moonlight, and the skies have completely darkened for our observing and imaging tonight. Most of the objects on this list are gonna be best viewed with a telescope, but a number of them can also be seen with binoculars and even just the naked eye. To help show you exactly where these objects are going to be, I'm going to be using my favorite astronomy app to share with you their location, Sky Safari. If you have an interest in downloading or taking a look at this app, I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description below. Now let's begin tonight by facing towards the southeast and looking up for the most prominent constellation in the winter sky. It's really going to be the base point for everything that we find this evening, the constellation Orion. Start out with your finder scope and a low magnification eyepiece whenever you're looking for objects in the night sky. Star hop from bright star to bright star until you get to the deep sky object that you're looking for. After finding the three stars that make up Orion's belt, move down until you come across what looks like a patch of gray clouds floating in the sky. What you have just found is the gorgeous Orion Nebula and its stellar nursery of stars being born. Even with moderate light pollution for where I live, my eight inch Dobsonian telescope can pick up a grayish teal color coming from this deep sky object. Every year I image the Orion Nebula in January or February. And this is one of my favorite shots that I took recently with my Canon SL2, 135mm Samyang lens and Skyguider Pro tracking mount, showing off arguably the best deep sky object that the night sky has to offer. The constellation Orion is home to our next two targets as well. Move back up to Orion's belt and you will come across the Horsehead Nebula. To see it visually, you're really going to need incredibly dark skies, a large telescope, and probably even the help of an H-beta filter to enhance the contrast of your view. This long exposure image I took of the Horsehead Nebula shows the incredible beauty of this dark nebula with the Flame Nebula parked right near it as an added bonus. Over from Orion's belt, you will find one of the brightest reflection nebula in the night sky. M78. I've only captured a few images of this target, but it goes well with the impressive family of objects located within the Orion constellation. Let's move out of the constellation Orion and over to the constellation Monoceros, where you'll find the open clusters NGC 2244 inside the Rosetta Nebula and NGC 2264, the Christmas tree cluster inside of the Cone Nebula. While these nebulas will be difficult to see through your telescope, the two clusters within them are an enjoyable part of space to explore with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. 
with faint hints of the Rosetta Nebula showing up, this image shows off these two clusters. But I didn't quite get enough exposure time to pick up the famous red from this nebula. Let's move back to the constellation Orion and then move up until we come to the constellation Taurus. It's here where you will find the open star cluster Hyades. Wider fields of view and low-powered eyepieces will provide the best observing experience of this large object in the night sky. I was just able to fit the Hyades into the field of view of my 135mm lens while taking this image of it. Even without imaging equipment or a telescope, the beauty and complexity of this region of space is enjoyable to see with binoculars or even just the naked eye. Just above the Hyades, you'll find another great naked eye object, the Pleiades. The Seven Sisters are another great binocular target that will reveal more and more stars as you move your way up to views through a telescope at low and medium magnifications. In long exposure photography, the Blue Nebula appears within the Seven Sisters. I hope to one day image the Pleiades from a darker sky than where I currently live to reveal even more of the faint nebula making up this object. Let's make our way over to the constellation Auriga. Here you will find, amongst several objects, the starfish and pinwheel clusters. This region of space is a great view through binoculars and low magnification eyepieces in your telescope, and its star density shows up incredibly well through astrophotography. Right at the edge of the Taurus constellation, you'll find the famous Crab Nebula. This object can be a difficult one to see under light polluted skies, but it's worth your time to try and hunt down due to it being one of the most famous supernova remnants in the night sky. As a bonus object for the winter sky, since we're already in this part of the neighborhood, you won't want to miss one of the best open clusters in the Gemini constellation, M35. This naked eye object can be enjoyed with no equipment whatsoever under clear, dark, and steady skies. Those are my top picks for the best objects out in the nighttime sky this winter. But I want to know what you would add to this list. If there's been anything that you've been out to observe or image, or anything that you think I may have left off this list that you would like to share with others, please let us know what that is in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.